Okay, so. I've taken the liberty now to go ahead and uh, complete that application of red. Um, the uh, Evil Sun's red phase. So now you can see, um, hopefully you can see, some fading on the edges, uh, you know, the, the raised parts of the armor. And you can see some of the darker color in the recessed areas or the areas around the, the blood drops, for example. I also went ahead and painted uh, the scrolls and the strap and the ropes with brown. The next step here is another red highlight. Let's see what else I have here. I missed my blood red. Um, oh, the Walking Dead. Talking Dead is back on. Back in a few. All right, I'm back again. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I'm watching The Talking Dead after watching The Walking Dead. So, yeah. Um, uh, this model, as far as detailing is concerned, and uh, the red, is pretty much good to go. However, I'm not going to stop here. Um, previously, with my older army, I would do an edging of, uh, of blazing orange. However... Uh, now I'm going to try this Wild Rider Red. Which is pretty much blazing orange as far as I'm concerned. I don't think they really have a, um, a translation for Wild Rider Red. Part of my reach. But I'm going to use this just to kind of edge the, the, the highlights here. Get on frame. So when I'm doing edging on the highlights, it's ultra important that you have a nice super fine point. And uh, what you're doing is kind of resting the edge of your brush on the armor edge and then dragging it across. Now, I'm not feathering this at all. I'm just doing pure edging with this co this color. Uh, speaking to someone on Facebook a few minutes ago, actually, and he asked me to show how I hold my models. So, uh, something I wanted to focus on. Um, I, I paint, you know, people have all their own ways of doing it. The way I do it, the Jello Balls way, is I just base, and I hold the base mostly. And, um, it's how I hold my hands that matters to get a steady hand. If you watch, you know, I'm doing this for the camera, so I'm trying to open up my hands. So you can see what's going on. Oh, that was blurry. But uh, I'll hold my the model with thumb and forefinger. Then I'll support it with right uh, middle finger here. 
then rest my two other fingers on the table as so. Then I'll come in with this hand. And when I paint with this one, I'll rest my right uh, pinky and second finger on the table. Let me zoom out a bit so you can see this better. So, and then I'm holding the brush with my three fingers. So what I have here is a really nice, come around this side, when I hold it, the only things moving are my three fingers holding the brush. And you can really be kind of precise this way with your detailing. Let me come back in a few. All right, so back to my blood angel here. Now, let's talk about uh, shadows, shading. I'm not incredibly pleased with the highlighting. Um, in my new painting style, I'm trying to minimize my line highlighting uh, and improve the, the edging through shading instead. Um, so while I've got some shading here, as you can see here, up in there, um, the, the, the highlights, I want to keep them subtle. They don't quite pop the way I like my models to pop. So what I'm going to do now is take some corn red base uh, paint here. I'm going to squirt some down just a bit on my palette. Take my glaze medium. About 50-50. Mix it up. Now I'm going to use this and lay this into the recessed areas. See what this does for me. So now, so far, I've been kind of pulling the highlights out. Now I'm going to push the shadows back. Kind of a reverse of what I was doing before. I'm going to drag the brush into the highlight. Or, I mean, into the shaded recessed area instead of on the edge. And then kind of feather it out into the armor. Definitely don't want to do too much at once. You want to do it slowly. Let the sh the shade build up. God, sorry, you can't see that. This is as opposed to just using wash to do this. You can get the same kind of effect just using wash. However, it's wash is very random and, and hard to control, just throwing wash into the recessed areas. Shading with a darker color gives you much more control over what you're trying to do. So now, right here is a nice example of contrast. On the edge of the backpack here, I've got a, a hard highlight. So right here on the venting area, I'm going to add some dark um, shading, which is going to kind of pop that highlight out. Hopefully you just saw the effect happen.
on the legs, I was adding the lighter red here and feathering it down. Now at the bottom, I'm going to add some darker red. Got to feather it up. In this case, I went a little too high with that. I'm going to just kind of wet my brush and then kind of erase what I did. I'm only doing this in, in some, a few precise locations. Just to accentuate the shaded areas. When I paint, I don't really pay much attention to like the concept of realistic lighting. You know, some painters really harp on the fact that you have to have all the light sources coming from the right direction. I don't really do that. Um, and this works for me. I just kind of paint what looks best per armor piece, really. So, um... I might do shadows on a shoulder and then defy logic and kind of put shadows on the arm in different locations compared to where they would be if I based them on how I did the shadows on the shoulder. And that's okay, guys. <laughs> that is fine. Now I'm pushing some of that red back. Got a little too much on my blending I just had there with my light red. Hmm. Got this skull. I want I want to bring the skull out. So I'm adding some dark around it. So this is a uh, scab red or red gore. They're kind of similar, basically, this, the corn red. And uh, this is an old technique I've been using for years, just using red gore, corn red, to uh, kind of push back into my highlighting to really accentuate my shadows too. In the viewfinder on my camera from when I'm looking, this red is way more cherry red than it appears in my hands maybe it's my lighting but the model in my hands looks much darker than it does on the viewfinder so um when i get this on my computer i'll probably see how effective it looks on camera to you or ineffective yeah that was good that was a good little touch right there. Did you see that soft touch I put on his little butt, butt plate? <laughs> that really helped. I tend to not put a lot of focus on the backs of the Marines anyway. When you're painting a whole army for display, uh, you know, it's just not incredibly necessary. You might be better off just spending some of your time doing more details on the front. If you really have to pick and choose where you want to focus. All right, well, I think that he looks fairly good now. I think I'm pretty happy with him. Uh... 
I'm trying to get rid of using orange, and I don't have much orange on this model. That Wild Rider Red is as orange as it gets. I think what I'm going to do, though, is take a little bit, go a little bit brighter than this with my edging. One shade up from the Wild Rider Red. Wild Rider Red. And we'll see what happens. Let me find one for you. I'll be back in a second.